another Knives of Note video. I am here with Corky Viverberg. Hi, Corky. Hi. And he is drove all the way up from Sacramento, California with his awesome display. And he is going to talk about the stuff that he's got. So why don't you show me your display there, Corky? Okay. Um, what we're looking at here is we're looking at a collection of knives that are within the historical context of other items that would have been owned by, and in this case, the person is McLean. And McLean, the Scots were um, generally the managers for the Hudson Bay Company, and this particular McLean was the man who carried the big knife, wow. and he was honored by the local uh, tribe in the Great Lakes that did bird quill work, wow. and that's natural dyes. And we know that this bird quill work and this sheath was made between 1835 and 1845 because of those tiny beads on the edge, which are called seed beads. And when they were introduced by the Hudson Bay Company within a decade, the societies of women no longer did bird quill work. They, they went completely to beading. So Whoa. the bird quill disappeared. Then uh, he probably went and had his name engraved in Quebec on his proud knife. And this is the knife. Woo! Look at that Substantial. monster. And uh, so he was the man that carried the big knife. And as you can imagine, probably never traveled too far from the fort. Wow. Wow. Has quite a heft to it. Wow, look at that thing. Lovely clip point, 13 and a half inch blade, and a wonderful starburst here on the on the handle, just from the wear next to his oh. next to his body. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the cool. McLean buoy. On the other end of the spectrum is this really beautiful Rogers cartouche, which was highly valued probably by a mountain man who carved the top of it is a blade catcher because it has no guard if he got in a knife fight. And he carved the bottom in the Rocoso as a thong cutter to be able to cut hide into thong. <laughs> it's a cartouche which is probably the most useful of all blade types. It's a beautiful weight and balance. It was used for defense as well as eating and it had a spectacular sheath on it with wow. a tin snap, British tin snap again from the mid-century, early centuries, the 1830 to 1850. That is awesome, Corky. So you can see how the small knives were highly valued and the large knives were highly valued. Before the buoys were these knives. This was the typical fighting knife during the Cumberland Gap era. Uh, and you're looking at men that carried very heavy rifles, flintlock rifles, more than 13 pounds. And so their knives and everything else they carried had to be small. So this is a nine inch, now this is about an eight and a half inch blade on that. Beautiful quillens, this is great blacksmith work. It's made out of a file. And typically, a man would carry this knife, a small um, possibles uh, satchel like this, uh, the, the horn, and maybe a fighting spike like this. So these two things were formidable weapons to defend himself with his one single shot rifle. These were very typical, carried by the journeymen up in um, uh, the Great Lakes areas. These were mixed blood gentlemen, mostly French and Huron. This is an assumption sash that was knit by both men and women uh, in uh, the journeyman culture. Uh, this is a, again in the same period, 1830 to 1850. Uh, journeyman, and, you mean the curry de type? Excuse me for a moment. Yes, we're being recorded. Oh, I'm sorry. So that's all right. And uh, this. Uh, this uh, is a unique sash in that it had the capuchon, the dome knit right into, woven right into it. 
because these sashes, which were wrapped around the waist, were taken off the waist, put over the forehead, under the arm, and then tied around a bundle in the back to carry the bundle of the personals as the journeymen carried their canoes up on their shoulders wow. as they were portaged. So the last of the cool. group here is really quite unique, and these are all from uh, the Hudson Bay era. This right here is uh, a lot of people have wondered whether it's some kind of puzzle, like the Appalachian puzzles that men used to use when their daughters were being courted, because it's hard to figure out what it is. In there rolling around appears to be a marble, but in fact, this is a Kupnik spruce carved and uh, ornamented a powder horn. The, uh, excuse me, that this is ornamental here, which is the head of a sea lion. Oh, wow. That and this amazing. side here is a tortoise head and it is the measuring cup for the powder. Is that, is that what this here is too? Yes, that's measuring for the powder. And this is the musket ball, and it holds two different size musket balls, about 15 each in this track. The beauty of it is that it's curved, and the sash, like this, would fit through here, and then this would fit on the curve of the body as the sash went around <laughs> around here. Wow, Corky, that is awesome. As far as we awesome. know, it's one of a kind, and uh, we don't know the value of anything like this, so that'll be determined someday in auction, probably. That is just outstanding. So these are all eras from the fur trade. Thank you so much for showing us, Corky. You're Appreciate welcome. it. That is an awesome episode. Thank Glad you. Glad you enjoyed it.